Okay, what we're going to have a look at here is um, recombinant DNA or gene splicing. And let's just stop and think about what those words mean. So to recombine um, means to put a different combination together um, of DNA or to gene splice, to splice another gene in. And what we're basically talking about is getting a gene from one organism and inserting it into the DNA of another organism. Now what springs to mind is all these, um, these horror Photoshop sort of animals that you, you might find on YouTube um, with freakish combinations. And uh, I can assure you that that's not what we're capable of doing in science at all at the moment. Um, what we're dealing with is really just dealing with the DNA of bacteria and looking at, at plasmids. We do have the capabilities of extracting DNA from um, the chromosomes of eukaryotic animals um, and, and using those genes in the plasmids. Uh, but we don't have um, really the ability to, to do much manipulation of the actual chromosomes um, of, of more complex animals, not to the same degree we can with the plasmids anyway. So what we're really talking about here is, is, is identifying a, a, a gene or a section of DNA of interest and inserting it into a plasmid. And the way we go about that is we cut the, the DNA and the plasmid with the same restriction enzyme. So we have the same sticky ends and we, and we um, basically um, encourage those two pieces of, uh, of DNA to join up. Uh, to make that join, um, we're going to need ligase. But that join can only really occur if both pieces of DNA have been cut with the same restriction enzyme, which will make them complementary. So looking at a bit of an overview of this process, what we're really after is uh, getting lots of these sections of, um, of the DNA gene that we want to insert, lots of these plasmids, cutting them both, creating these sticky ends um, so that they match together. Um, and we, f we form these recombinant plasmids. We're hoping that the bacteria will then take up these plasmids um, and that's called um, trans that when they're being transformed, um, the bacteria have been transformed. These bacteria then reproduce and we end up with lots of copies of the bacteria and therefore lots of copies of the plasmid. Um, and and um, th th these, these bacteria cells will be um, reading um, the, the gene that's been inserted. So if it's a human gene, they'll be reading it in, in the same code um, as if it was a human gene. So if it was a gene to make a particular protein, uh, they could be doing, they could be reading that. Now they've had quite a bit of success doing this with a couple of things. One example is the human growth hormone. And they've been able to actually produce this hormone. Um, they've been able to isolate the genes in humans and they've been able to insert it into a plasmid. So they cut the, the plasmid with, with the restriction enzyme they cut the hormone with the restriction enzyme and, they, and they, they are able to join them together, insert them in bacteria. The bacteria then transcribe and translate um, a particular protein. Um, and in this case, it'll be the protein for the growth hormone. Um, they, and they've, they've had success with um, a couple of things. That are, uh, the other one's been um, insulin um, and being able to produce insulin and human growth hormone artificially have been very beneficial. Now one strategy worth mentioning is sometimes scientists might insert um, an extra gene besides um, the, the one for the growth hormone or the insulin. They might actually insert a, a gene for antibiotic resistance and that might just help them isolate the cells who, who have been transformed, the bacteria cells that have taken up this plasmid. And the way that, that'll work is um, there'll be some cells that'll take up the plasmid and other cells that won't. Um, and the way that the scientists try and do this is they really they try and heat shock the bacteria and they sometimes have a particular um, balance of chemicals in the solution and that'll just encourage the um, the the plasma to move across the cell membrane into the cell. It doesn't happen all the time, um, but they they want to find which cells have taken this plasma and which ones haven't. So what they do is they put um, the cells in a nutrient. Um, agar treated with ampicillin which is an antibiotic and because um, the 
cells with the, the, the DNA of interest also have this antibiotic resistant gene. Um, only, the, only the cells that have the plasmid will survive. All these cells will be toast and um, you end up with a, a colony of bacteria who have been transformed and are able to produce um, the, the protein that you're, you're after. Now scientists have come up with some interesting ways to try and get this, um, this manipulated DNA into, into cells and in, in, um, in, in some plants they've been quite successful using bacteriophages to in, inject the, um, the, the DNA into the plant cells and likewise um, in, in, some, um, in some animals they've, they've used viruses um, which as we know uh, go to a cell and they inject their DNA in to, to take over the cell. Um, and, and, that's, and that's been a, a very interesting sort of method to try and get that DNA directly into the cells and be able to act. Alright, so good luck with studying uh, recombinant DNA or gene splicing.